Good morning, guys. Welcome to Bible Lesson 86. Let's get started with prayer. Bow your heads, close your eyes. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your many blessings to us. I pray that you continue to be with my students, be with each one as they work on their schoolwork and virtual classes. Give them the strength and wisdom to be able to do their work to the best of their abilities, Lord, according to um, your word and according to uh, what their teachers tell them to do. I pray, Lord, that you be with their parents. Give them special grace, special wisdom, and patience during this time. I pray, Lord, that you'd help them to be able to spend much time with their families, Lord. I pray that you continue to be with Hazel, Josh, and Josephine, as they have all lost people that are very dear to them, that they love very much recently. I pray that you would comfort their families as well, and that <clears throat> you would give them the strength and peace, Lord. Help them to feel your love and your comfort. We love you very, very much. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, now we're going to go on to our verse activity. Our verse answers the question, who made God? So what's the answer? Nobody made God. He always existed. To exist means to be, to, um, to be living, to be alive, to be around. He was always there from the beginning of time and even past that. He will always be around. He always has been around. Nobody made God. He always was. All right, so our verse that we have that goes with that is Psalm 90, verse 2. Before the mountains were brought forth, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. So before the beginning of time and even after, <clears throat> Everything else here has died, has gone, even after uh, God creates our new heaven and new earth, he will always exist and always be God. All right, let's go ahead and erase three words. We'll erase before, to, and thou. Psalm 92, before the mountains were brought forth, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. All right, let's do mountains. We'll do were. <clears throat> and we'll do God. Psalm 92. Before the mountains were brought forth, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. All right, let's do an everlasting. Uh, fourth. And we'll do Psalm 92. Okay. Psalm 92. Before the mountains were brought forth, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. All right, let's do brought. From and everlasting. Okay, after this one, you're going to say it by yourself. Ready? Psalm 92. Before the mountains were brought forth, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. All right, I'm going to get rid of the rest of these. And now it is your turn. Ready? Psalm 92. How'd you do? Did you get it? All right, I hope so. Let's say it again together. Psalm 92. Before the mountains were brought forth, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Okay, now let's say it in Spanish. Salmos 92. Antes que naciesen los montes, Desde el siglo hasta el siglo, <coughs> tú eres Dios. Again, Psalm, excuse me, Salmos 92. Antes que naciesen los montes, desde el siglo y hasta el siglo, tú eres Dios. Very good. Hope that you are ready to say those soon if you haven't already said them to me. 
Don't forget to send me a video, okay? Video is better than voice note. But if you can't send a video, a voice note will do. All right, we are going to talk today about some of the friends that Jesus had in the city of Bethany. Remember the city of Bethany? Who lived there at Bethany? There was a brother and two sisters, this little family, Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. Remember? And Mary and Martha were the ones that uh, were, were making the dinner for Jesus, or Martha was making the dinner, and Mary was listening to Jesus. Mary's the one who uh, brought the oil to wash Jesus' feet with. So Lazarus was their brother, and Jesus was very good friends with them. Now, Jesus was not in Bethany because he knew that the last time he had been there, the Jews there, they had wanted to kill him. And so he was kind of staying away from that area. It wasn't his time yet to die. So he was doing, he was ministering, serving people in other places. Well, Lazarus became very, very sick. And they became very worried, Mary and Martha, that Lazarus might die because of how very sick that he was. And so, because Jesus was not only their friend, but also the Son of God and had the ability to, to help him, to heal him, make him better, Mary and Martha asked one of their servants to please go and send a message to Jesus and ask him to come right away because Lazarus was very sick. And so Jesus received this message that Lazarus is sick and Jesus said, all right, I'll go, but not yet. And Jesus waited for two days. In the meantime, Lazarus died. In those two days that Jesus did not go, Lazarus died and they took him out to bury him. They would have wrapped his body in these cloths. That was how they would have prepared the body for, for burial. They wrap it up in cloths. They would put um, sweet smelling perfumes over it. And then they took him out and put him into the tomb. And back then they didn't bury people in the ground so much. They had caves and tombs that they would put people in. So they took him out there and they buried him in that tomb. Now Jesus, back where he was, now it had been two days. Now they hadn't received any word. They hadn't sent to Jesus and told him that Lazarus had died. But Jesus, he knows everything because he's God. So he knew that Lazarus had died. But at this time, he was talking with his disciples and he said, all right, it is time. Let's go up to Bethany. Let's go and see Lazarus. You see, Lazarus is sleeping and it's time to wake him. Jesus was talking about his death, but you know, his disciples, they thought he meant that Lazarus was asleep, that Lazarus was resting. And they said, well, if he's sleeping, that's good for him. He's going to get better. Thinking a sick person needs to sleep, right? Why are you going to go wake him up? But Jesus knew they didn't understand. He was talking about the fact that Lazarus was dead. But Jesus said he was sleeping because Lazarus' death was not permanent. He wasn't going to stay dead. So, La so Jesus just told them very simply, Lazarus is dead. So now we need to go up to Bethany and see his sisters. Now his disciples, they were a little unsure about this. They said, but Jesus, the last time we were there, they tried to stone you. Are you sure about going up there? And Jesus was very sure about going. And so his disciples, they were a little bit, uh, they didn't have a whole lot of faith. And one of his disciples said, okay, well, we're his disciples. So I guess we should go up with him because if he's going to die, well, we, at least we can die with him. Not very happy, were they? So they went with Jesus to go and see Mary and Martha. Martha heard that Jesus was on his way. So before he even got to where their house was, she ran out to meet him along the road. Jesus, Jesus, I'm so glad you could be here, but oh, if you had come earlier, then you could have saved my brother. He, he wouldn't have died. You could have healed him. She said, but I know that you're God, and so you can do anything that you want, and I know that you have a plan. And Jesus, he said, anyone who believes in me, I, I am the way. I am, I am life. Anyone who believes in me, won't die and will have everlasting life. And Jesus meant this for salvation as well as for right then. And he asked Martha, he said, do you believe? And she says, yes, yes, I believe. And she did truly believe. However, she also had in her mind that Lazarus was dead and no one was going to do anything else about that. 
So then she went to her sister, Mary. She said, Mary, Mary, Jesus is here. He's asking for you. She, Mary had, had not left the house when it was heard that Jesus was on his way. Perhaps she was feeling sad, maybe even angry that Jesus hadn't come yet. But when, Mary, when Martha told her that Jesus was asking for her, she left behind whatever she was doing in the house and she ran to Jesus, meeting him in the same place on the road where Martha had met him. She fell down before him. She said, oh, Jesus, if you had been here, if only you'd been here, my brother wouldn't have died. And seeing how sad she was and the people who had followed Mary, seeing, seeing that she had left the house, thinking that she was going to the grave, everyone that was with her was crying and Mary was crying and seeing how sad they were, it made Jesus cry as well. For two reasons, I think. One, because he didn't want to see Mary and Martha in such pain, in such sadness. But you know, from the very beginning, Jesus had said that the sickness that Lazarus had wasn't unto death, but this sickness was to show the glory of God. And that's why he had waited those two days. In fact, Jesus had told his disciples, you know, it's a good thing that I didn't go up right away because you need to see this to have more faith in me because they were so scared to go to Jerusalem thinking that, or to go to Judea, excuse me, that's the region that the city of Bethany is in, is Judea. They were afraid to go there because they thought they might be killed by the Jews. Jesus said, you, you need to see this happen so you'll have more faith in me. So he was sad to see that people didn't have faith in him, but he was also sad to see their sadness because Jesus, Jesus loved these people and he didn't want them to be sad. But Jesus did know that in the end, everything was going to be okay. So he said, please take me to his grave. And so they took Jesus to the tomb. And Jesus said, all right now, I want you to roll back the stone. Now, it's been four days since Lazarus died. Four days. He has been in that tomb. When you, when you die, your body does not last that long because it's time now for your body to, to become part of the earth, really. And so Jesus, when he said, okay, open up the tomb, Mary and Martha said, um, Lord, are you sure? It's been four days by now, he stinks. And Jesus said, yes, yes, I'm sure. Roll back the stone, open up the tomb. And so they did, and Mary and Martha were probably wondering, what's Jesus going to do? Jesus called out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. You know what happened? Lazarus came out of the tomb, walking just as healthy and as alive as could be, still wrapped up in his grave clothes, the Bible says, wrapped up in those claws and with the napkin and everything, but he was alive. Jesus said, go, go and loosen him, uh, get, him get him free from all of his rags. Can you imagine the joy for Mary and Martha seeing their brother alive again that they thought they had lost forever? Oh, they were so excited. And many of the people who were there chose to believe on Jesus. They saw the power that he had. So just as Jesus said, this happened to show his power, to show God's glory, that he was God and he had power over life and death. But you know, there were some Jews who did not believe. And so they decided, we want to come up with a plan to kill Jesus because they were also afraid that the Romans would see what Jesus was doing, would see everybody following him and would get angry and at the, at the Jews and maybe come in and wipe them all out thinking that they wanted to overthrow Rome, which wasn't why Jesus was there at all. He never said anything of the kind, but some of the Jews were afraid of that. So they said better that this one man die than that the whole nation dies not realizing that Jesus was there for just that purpose, to die for our sins so that we would not all have to die for our sins. But we'll get to that in another lesson. All right, we're gonna go ahead and stop there. I hope that you guys have a wonderful day and I'll see you in our next lesson. Bye.